with a brawl at WWE World and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Prior to NXT Stand and Deliver, Dijak ran into a Knuckles mascot backstage. All right, Knuckles, we ready to do this? Yeah? Just punch it one time as hard as I can, right? Let's do it! Here we go. Here we go. Yeah! Oh, ratio, Knuckles. I'm saving it for the match, big boy. You're gonna have to wait and pay to see. <laughs> As the likes of Lexis King and Sean Spears have made the move to NXT, Shawn Michaels was asked about AEW stars joining the promotion, saying this during the NXT Stand and Deliver press conference. I always go back, I would take darn near anybody. I can't say specifically because I think there is so much talent there. I don't know everybody's situation. The last thing I want to do is get anyone in trouble. A lot of guys that used to be in NXT are up there that I've always loved. I don't get the opportunity to get to watch as much as I would like to, but I know that I love working with young talent, especially when I get to know them and I understand their passion and desire. Until I know what your desire is in this business, it's hard for me to say whether you're the one I'm going to work really hard for. It's become so personal to me on that level. There are certainly people I see from a talent standpoint that you do. Oh my goodness, they have a great deal of ability. What if we got a chance to work with them? I think we could do something special with them we got sean spears he's a guy who worked with a little bit in nxt before he got called up and eventually left but i always liked him because i always thought he was a formidable secure professional dude that could give you anything you ask for we enjoy working with darn near anybody and trying to make them better than what they were doing before whether it's coming out of college or with another promotion. If you give us at NXT an opportunity to work with you, I think we can get you closer to your goals and what you want to accomplish than anybody else. That's what we do and we work hard at doing that. Whether it's AEW, Japan, TNA, go around the globe. I'm excited about NXT having the opportunity to make anybody's career better than what they are currently doing and allow them to have the opportunity to enjoy weekends like we're about to have. Recalling his reaction to CM Punk's WWE return at Survivor Series last year, where he could be seen screaming and cursing, Seth Rollins said this at WWE World. I don't think I've ever been more unprofessional in my entire life than when CM Punk came back at Survivor Series. I was not feeling good. It's the same thing with The Rock. It was the same thing with Cody Rhodes. I love WWE. We're all family. I'm talking about everybody in the back, everybody that I've shared a ring with, everybody in production, creative all the way from Triple H to every single person out here. We're all family. We're all in this together. And when you have family, you protect your family. You protect your family from outsiders who have only self-interest in mind. I know for some of you guys, CM Punk is like that dude for you, right? He's like your hero. He's your martyr. But CM Punk left this place a decade ago, and every single day that he was gone, he tried to actively tear apart WWE. For me, that was like taking shots at my family. I protect my family and I stand up for my people. So when I see CM Punk out there actively taking shots to try to tear me down, tear my house down, tear my family apart, I got no time for that. What you saw at Survivor Series in real time was me experiencing a traitor coming into my house and trying to tear it apart and how I felt about that. It was just raw and as real as I've ever been. I guess that probably is unprofessional as I've ever been as well, but it is what it is. I don't like CM Punk and I I never will. Revealing his decision to not endorse a United States presidential candidate this year, The Rock said this on The Will Kane Show. 
Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answers no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy and I believe we can get better. The endorsement that I made years ago with Biden was what I thought was the best direction for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answers no. I'm not going to do that because what I realized that what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And that got me. The takeaway after that months and months and months, I started to realize like, oh man, that caused an incredible amount of division in our country. So I realize now going into this election, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that because my goal is to bring our country together. I believe in that, in my DNA. So in the spirit of that, there's going to be no endorsement. Not that I'm afraid of it at all, but it's just I realize that this level of influence, I'm going to keep my politics to myself. And I think it's between me and the ballot box. Addressing The Rock's use of blood and swear words in the buildup of his feud with Cody Rhodes, Triple H told the Impulsive Podcast, I believe there's a time for things to work. There's a time for everything, but it's got to be done in moderation. It's got to be done when it's right. Because if you don't, if everything you say is just cussing, who cares? You tune that out, it doesn't matter. But right now, we're so clean on it that Rock says something Given his position as a disruptor and guy coming from the outside, it's believable. He has that leeway and doesn't care, and it's shocking because it's not been that way. When it's needed, pull the trigger. But the discipline is only pulling the trigger when it really means something and when it's shocking. On that same podcast, Triple H said this regarding The Rock's run as a heel, noting that if you had asked me two months earlier, hey, Rock comes in here, this goes however it goes, whatever, what do you think about Rock turning heel? I would have said he'll never go for that, right? Because of his career and everything else, like him turning heel, but you know, he was the one that was like, what if we flip this? What if we do the tag? What if I turn heel? As soon as he said it, I was like, that's like the answer, yeah. And to be honest, for me, I could feel like this puts a whole fresh coat of paint on everything. At the WWE Media Day event, LA Knight would end up brawling with AJ Styles. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday tonight. 
You gonna be a SmackDown pussy? You gonna be there? Come on. Following his win in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Bronson Reed said this in a SmackDown exclusive. It feels great. I had the belief in myself that I was going to win that trophy. That trophy in the hands of any other man is just a trophy. But you watch what I do with it. It's a launching pad, and I'm going to go on to great things from here on out. Talking about the reception she has gotten from fans after her main roster call-up, Tiffany Stratton told Denise Salcedo, Honestly, it's been so reassuring for me because I think getting called up from NXT, you're always worried like, are they going to remember me? Are they going to even know me? Are they going to like me? It's such a different audience from NXT. So it's just been so reassuring for me to see that I won the WWE crowd over. Reacting to Rhea Ripley's use of his move, the stink face, Rikishi said this on his podcast. I got more text, videos sent to me, Instagram, TikTok, on the Twitter, whatever. I was wondering why the hell everybody's tagging me on this, so I popped it open, man, and there was Rhea Ripley. Rhea was backing it up, boy. She lifts them tights up. And Wasabi, the Wasabi, it was kind of wanting to do its own thing. She's doing her thing, man, and a big shout out to Rhea. It's funny to me to be able to see the new generation out there backing it up and keeping it going. For an idea regarding a retirement match for himself, Rey Mysterio told Sportskeeda, that is a very good question and a very hard one as well. I don't think I have an opponent in mind, but if I had to put all my marbles on the line, I wouldn't mind betting my mask against something big, something worth me winning for the very last time. I don't know who that is. I mean, would Dom put his hair on the line? Mask versus hair? Why not? Yeah, that might be a great option. When it comes to the origin of her late husband, Bray Wyatt's fiend character in the Firefly Funhouse, Jojo Offerman noted at the WWE World event, it's no secret that Wyndham was an incredible father, obviously. So I think that having all his kids at that time, we were pregnant, but he had the first two. So he knew kids shows and he knew how well kids shows did. And so we kind of had the idea to come up with a twisted version of a kids show because he said, you know, kids get so involved involved and so just they dive into these situations he's like so what if i did something like that but made it more for adults so that a lot of sleepless nights there were lots of nights where he would wake me up three four five in the morning to kind of just toss a whole bunch of ideas at me and I loved hearing them, but I also loved my sleep. So a lot of times I was like, please wait till the morning. But yeah, so as he slowly came up with this whole Firefly Fun House and The Fiend, I realized very quickly this is something that is so out of the box, so creative that there's no way that it's not going to work. Talking about winning the tag team titles with Sami Zayn at WrestleMania 39, Kevin Owens said this to Sports Gita Wrestling. Well, you know, this year has been pretty interesting. You know, we, me, and Sami Zayn won the tag titles last year. That was huge. And then after that, it kind of felt like a whole bunch of nothing happened for a while, but that's just the nature of what we do. It's very cyclical. And now to be in a match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania, you know, no disrespect to Logan Paul. He's there, obviously, but as a live lifelong wrestling fan to be in the ring with randy orton at wrestlemania that's pretty special so you know it all ended up fine in the end
Touching on her return to WWE, Naomi told the Ringer Wrestling Show, I knew I would. I didn't know when. I didn't know how. I didn't know where, but I didn't like ending my journey here in the way that it happened. So I know for me and myself, it could be made right, and the time is right, and the opportunity presented itself. I would come back to finish my career in the light that I should, and the company that I love so much that made me the star I am. So it was never about, oh, that's it. I'm not coming back. It was a lot going on, and I just had to take a break, step away, figure out things, get some things done, and stand on business. Giving the reason for her move from AEW to WWE, Jade Cargill said this on Busted Open Radio. I mean, other than the fact that the machine is ridiculous over here, the connections, the history, the legacy, it's one of one. AEW was a new company. Obviously, they're still figuring things out, but that happens in every company, right? You have to figure things out, what's good and what's bad. I'm 31. I don't have time to really grow with a company of my age. I have to be in an established company and I have to go up there and let that be known because you can't do this forever as a woman especially in your 30s the majority of the fan base is like okay well it's time for her to go on her way what's next for her and let's be real people want to see regardless of their good or not they want to see that 20 something year old on tv rather than that 30 something year old woman on tv so time is not on my side and i knew i had to make the best decision for me but not just for me my family it gets no better than this. As AEW experienced some talent cuts to their roster, president of the company, Tony Khan, noted why this took place, saying at the post-ROH Supercard of Honor press conference, this year I have been very active, not only in the free agent market, but in the production budget. There are things tonight, for example, on one song alone, I spent a year's pay for most pro wrestlers in this business. The budget with not only free agency, but production is very high. Also, we're going into a contract year. I plan to continue being very active, not only in free agency, but in the production of the show and producing great content. Going into this year, I have to look at where we're at. I had spent more than I had planned going into this year. I really love our roster and where we're at. I'm very supportive of everybody we have here and everybody who has ever worked here. This particular group, it was not easy choices to make. With this group, I would be happy to take any of them back under the right circumstances. I have no bridges burned with any of them. For us this year, it's an important year. I'm looking forward going into the media rights year and being very aggressive and putting our best foot forward doing the best wrestling we can i expect there will be people who want to come to aew and roh we're doing great wrestling and this is a great place to work During that same press conference, Tony Khan was asked about his decision to release the boys from their contract due to them apparently no-showing events. As he told Post Wrestling, I have not seen their exact statement. After the show, I heard a little bit of this as I was coming back. I stand by what I said. Also, I've only owned ROH for two years. There is a long history of ROH. It was my call to bring them back. I like their presentation with Dalton, and I like them both personally. I've had a lot of good experiences with them. I would be open to working with them again in the future there have been times where they came and have done great things for us we did the house rules tour and i loved having them there have been times for my era of roh and i've been told from the company i inherited other times in the past i'm just going off my experiences there are two sides to that story i know yesterday they said stay tuned i stayed tuned then i heard and i am not moved even with the boys i disagree with the point on travel and in the history of roh and working with us that there hadn't been a couple of times where they didn't make and it made me change stuff on the other hand i really like both of them whether we agree or not about the point of contention i think it's regardless they were great and a great part of dalton's act i like both of them Following bray wyatt's panel at wwe world a teaser for uncle howdy popped up
Let's go. Woo! And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.